Hi again friends, welcome to the third part of the tutorial for beginners in SketchUp for the web, the free version. Here we will continue exploring the tools that we can find at the toolbar. So let's start. The next group of icons you can find below are only used for solids and they are only available in the paid version except the first one, the outer shell. But anyway, I will skip it for now, as below you can find other basic tools which, in my opinion, are more important to learn when you are starting. They are the tools Move, Rotate and Scale. Let's start with Move. After clicking in the command, if you had ever used AutoCAD, you realize that you cannot select the objects to move and instead I have to click directly in a point. The problem is that in cases like a polygon, I am deforming it, so I have to use a different strategy. So, to move one or more objects, I have to select them first, and then activate the tool. This time I'm going to press the shortcut, which is M. Click on this end point, and let's move the rectangle towards this corner of the figure on the left. So, it's easy, as you can see. Now, this also works for moving lines or other objects which are located on faces, or inside other figures. For example, this line, I select it, activate move, click on the end point, and let's put the line in a new position 100 mm above the green axis. However, there could be a problem if I want to move the line to the sides, as once again I'm deforming the face. This happens because the line is intersecting the edges and the move tool does not disconnect them automatically. On the other hand, it won't be a problem for objects to run on faces when they don't intersect anywhere. One example is this little line that I just draw, and a second example can be this circle, which by using the center, and sometimes it's a bit hard to snap with the cursor, you have to do it slowly. And I can move the figure in a specific distance, as you can see in the screen. Copy. The copy tool does not exist independently in SketchUp. It's actually an option inside the move tool. It works similar. I select these objects, activate move, and now if you look at the status bar, I can cycle between copy, stamp and move by pressing the button control. So I press control only once, and now you can see also this cross below. I can copy the objects by clicking on a point, and then let's place them, for example, 500 mm up. Now I'm going to show you how to place an array of the objects. I will repeat the process, but this time I'm copying the rectangle along the red axis. Ah, and if you forgot to press Ctrl, you can do it now, it's not a problem. Put 500 again for the distance, then right away I'm going to type a number, for example 2, followed by the letter X. And what happened was, it multiplied by 2 the copy of the objects. Next, let's select the three rectangles and I'm going to copy them and don't forget to press the button control 500 mm up press enter and this time I will type 4x to have 4 rows of the copied objects. Another technique of making multiple copies of objects is between the original and the copy. For that, I just have to type slash and then a number. If I put 4, then I will have 3 more copies between the circles. Let's move to the next tool, Rotate. This one is also very easy to use. This time we have this triangle as our example. Choose the tool. It's below move. Then select the point and you can see that the position of the ruler defaults to the blue plane, 
Then select the second point in order to set the start angle of rotation and click again for confirming the new position of the triangle. In the case I want to rotate 90 degrees from the same point by starting from the green direction, I do this way. Now let's draw more lines in order to have a component in the third axis also. I'm holding shift to don't lift away the green axis, click in this point and connect here. Then I pick up again the rotate tool and you can see how the plane of rotation switches. By moving the pointer just a little bit, I can switch easily between the blue and red planes here. However, why doesn't it detect the green plane? When this happens, we can use the arrow keys to choose the plane of rotation. The up arrow is the blue plane, the right switches to the red plane, down is the plane according to the objects and left is the green plane. So let's click right now to rotate along this plane. Another tip, you can press the button control to make a copy of the rotation that I'm going to generate. In this case I hover this endpoint, go to the left and make the rotation how you wish. Scale. Let's learn how to scale in SketchUp for the web. For that I'm going to use one of the exercises that I have from chapter 3, this one. First I'm going to copy this figure and select all the elements including the dimension lines. Press Ctrl to copy. Click on this corner and copy everything along the red axis to the right. Next we are going to use the scale tool, which is the icon located here. Now notice, this yellow rectangle with green grips appears around the selected elements. This is how the scale tool works. If I click on one of the corners, I resize the figure proportionally using a scale factor. Notice that the opposite corner stays in the original position. If I set 2 for the scale, look that all the lines will measure now the double that it was before. Therefore, if I pick another corner grip, I change its position and it's the opposite corner that is not moving. By moving the position of the grids in the middle of the edges, this time what I resize is along one of the axes, the red axis in this case. And look that the figure deforms. Now two quick tips. If I press Ctrl once, I toggle to scale the objects about the center. If I press shift instead, I apply to the grips on the edges also the uniform scale, in the same way it was working for the corners. Other reason that we can use the scale tool is with the proposal of converting a circle in an ellipse. I press the shortcut to activate the command, S, I'm going to change the dimension along the red axis. And now we have here an ellipse. Tape measure. This tool is very important while modeling our projects, because we can set points with specific distances. When we click on a vertex, we can set points along an edge separate in specific distances, so later we can draw from those places. Another way of using this tool is by picking a line instead and then we can add guidelines to draw certain figures between them. And one example very useful is when modeling a house for example. Here I use these guidelines to draw the frame of the windows. The procedment was the following. I put horizontal and vertical guidelines in order to have the exact area of each window frame. 
Then I drew rectangles easily using the intersections. Dimensions. Below tape measure, we find the tool to place dimensions. It's a very intuitive way of doing it. We just need to click on the icon and then pick up two points to place a dimension line measuring the distance between. We will decide in which direction we want to place the dimensions. And as you can see, they snap along one of the axes. So let's place it along this direction and click when you are happy with the position. Just click right away on the next two points and suddenly you will find it easy to snap in the same direction as the previous object. Ok, now let's place the next dimensions along the wall and we are going to check out how to edit them. Let's go to the right panel and click on Entity Info. Now, it doesn't show anything because I don't have any object selected. So, I need to pick up a dimension. Now look, there are several parameters that we can edit. And let's start with the first one, the text. It displays the actual distance between the endpoints and this application does not allow me to change it. Below, we can change the font type and the text size. For example, if I want to increase the size of the text, I can set a bigger value and you can notice the difference, but look that it only applied to the dimension of the selection. Basically, to change the size of all dimension lines, we will have to select them all, and then if here it displays multiple fonts, just set the type first, the one by default is Open Sans, and finally change the size. Then if I want to insert another dimension line, it comes with the same settings as the previous ones, but there is a way to change them. And it's in Model Info, which is this icon at the right panel. Here, we can change the settings for the units and text that we insert in the drawing. The first one is the Units section. At the top, we can change the units used here. Above, there are the formats for Imperial Units and below the Metrical Units, millimeters, centimeters or meters. Now if I change the current format, the dimension lines update automatically, as you can see in the drawing. The next part is for the precision. We can set from no decimals, 1, 2, etc. Then we have a parameter for length snapping. It indicates if we want to snap lengths when drawing our objects. Now, this is important. Notice that before the value was set to 1 mm. And once I was changing the format, the snap interval was also changing. And when I picked up millimeters again, the value is now set to 1000 mm. So be careful to look if the value is the one that you want. Now, I'm going to change the snap interval to 10 mm. And when drawing a line, you can notice the lengths vary now from 10 to 10 mm. Then there are also the angle units. Here there is also the precision and angle snapping. And for example, if I make a line and then an arc that I need to set the angle, I can see I only have one decimal and I can snap every 15 degrees. However, the snap here is not very noticeable. So I personally don't care too much about the angle snapping. I simply type the value that I need directly. The section for the text. I can set the default dimension style for the new dimensions that I insert. Ah, and this does not apply for the existing ones. As you can see, nothing is changing unless I click on Update all the dimensions. Now, yes. Here we also have settings for alignment and the symbol of the screen aligns the dimensions to my screen, no matter the rotation of the viewport. And the others align the text regarding the dimension lines. 
Finally, we can choose the style of the endpoints here. Text. We can add text with a leader to make annotations in our drawings. Simply click on this icon, then click on a point or in a face. First, we position the arrowhead, then click again to place the text. Now, the text by default can be the coordinates of the point or, as this is a face, it's the area in square millimeters. Ok, because we don't want this, we can erase all the text and write what we want, for example, text1. Now, to edit its properties, we select the object and go to the entity info. Like dimension lines, I can edit the font and text size, but also the type of arrow I want to use. To change the color, I can click on the material and this time let's select this white, for example. Then there are also some specific options when we click in a selected text to access the right button panel. We can edit the text. We can change the arrow. This we also can do on Entity Info. And regarding the leader, we can hidden it. Or change to view based instead of push pin. The difference is that view based may not be always visible as they can go inside other drawings. Instead, with push pin, the leader can rotate a bit in order to have the text always visible. Protractor. This tool is similar as the tape measure, but we are going to use it to make diagonal guidelines by specifying an angle. Let's show you an example. Click on the icon. Pick up two points. It can be those corners of the window frame. Then I can draw a guideline with an angle. I'm going to set, for example, 35 degrees. Then let's add another guideline, but from the other vertex. And this time I set 50 for the angle. Now suppose I want to make a triangle here and you can see that it's going to be pretty easy with the guidelines. At the end I can delete this segment and if I want to push this area to my side I'm going to use push-pull to create the 3D element easily. Axis. We can change the position of the axis to any point that we want and it's simple. Click on the tool which is below Protractor. Then I'm going to click to set the new origin of the coordinates. For example here, in the corner of this box. Next, place the new direction for the red axis and finally the direction for the green axis. And notice that I could switch the direction with the blue axis if I wanted. But anyway, I'm going to use the same directions as before. I click here and it's done. To reset to the default position, I have to click with the right button in one of the axes to open this menu and then click on Reset. Now I am in the default origin again. Going back, if the menu that opens is different, I should try again until the menu for the axis appears. Ah, uh, but look, if I click on the red axis, it's not working. Why? Because I have a guideline overlapped, and I'm opening the menu for the guideline. Basically, in this case, I must click on one of the other axes. So, it's all for now. Please proceed to the next part, and subscribe to Cat in Black if you haven't done it yet, to get notifications of new releases. So, see you in the next video.